we're going to talk about net worth. Now, we talked about how your net worth can be determined by your network. In other words, you want to hang around people that can improve your position. If we know that, then we should take steps to make sure that our network serves that end. Now, what is a network? What is networking? Now, the network is the people that you hang with, basically, whether it's your coworkers, whether it's your business association, whether it's family, friends, those constitute your net work. Now, the process of growing that group is called networking. So you're doing it already right now. What we're going to talk about today is how to do it the right way. Now, anytime you put two or more people together, networking cannot happen. It can occur in the elevator, in the mall, at the 7-Eleven coffee shop. You can network. That's why I never leave the office without my pen or my business card. I have those things with me all the time. I don't care if I'm just going down the hall to the bathroom because I know there's a possibility that networking can occur. Now, networking, we also consider that the sharing of ideas, opinions, and content. A group of acquaintances that associate, that maintain communication for mutual benefit. Those are some of the, like, what we might describe as networking. Now, what I want to relate to you today, networking is not a sales pitch. Now, that's where some people have gone wrong with networking. They treat it like it's a sales opportunity. But really what networking is, it is a relationship building tool. You have to build relationships. And you do that with networking. Networking is also built upon the premise of not what can you do for me, but what can I do for you? Now, that may be what some of you have been doing wrong with networking. From the beginning, you go to a networking meeting or you engage in, with somebody on a networking basis and your frame of mind is, what can I get from this person? How can this person help me? What I want you to do today, going forward, if you're not doing this, change that reference, change that mindset so that when you're networking, you are bringing something to the table for the people with whom you are networking. It's not about what can they do for you, not what they can do for me. What can you do for that person? That is the foundation upon which networking is built. How can I help? Not what can I get? Now, what is relationship? Why do we need relationships? Why do we need to network? Why do we need to grow our network in the first place? And in order to do that, we must engage in networking. Networking is great for getting more information, promotion, exposure, building your brand, resources. And one of the main ones is building that network of stakeholders. Now, as a business developer, when I discovered this, that's when things made a material difference in the trajectory of my business. When I decided, when I came upon the knowledge that to build a successful business, you cannot be uniformly focused on customer acquisition. And unfortunately, many business owners, particularly small business owners, because we have limited resources and time, we spend so much time just trying to get that next customer. We have like laser focus. And in another era, maybe that was true. That's the way it was done. But the old days of the car salesman with the check it jacket and <laughs> fast talking aluminum salesman, salesman, aluminum, yeah, those days are gone. We have to build relationships nowadays, but not just relationships with potential clients. We have to build relationships with other stakeholders as well. We're seeing right now a supply chain disruption. And that drives this point home better than anything I can say, is that we need customers and clients, of course, but we also need suppliers and vendors. We need contractors. We need employees. We need partners. We need investors. 
We need joint ventures. We need the government. We need the community. We need nonprofits. These are all stakeholders that you would not get through traditional types of advertising. I talk about advertising often, and I keep reminding people that there are two basic types of advertising. They have direct action, direct action advertising, where you ask for a sale, use a strong call to action to get me, buy one, get one free, come by my office, let's make an appointment today, let's set up this consultation. That's called a direct action advertisement. And that's where most of us are familiar. But this second type of advertising, which is equally important, and in some cases more so, is called indirect. It's communication. And once again, that's where networking comes in. It's about nurturing and building relationships, keeping yourself in front of people who eventually, when they finally need you or they need somebody like you, the services that you offer, then you'll be front of mind. Now, one thing about this type of advertising, once again, why it seems to be missing from many small companies, because like I say, it's not immediate. You you go to a networking meeting and you go in there with this attitude that I described earlier is, I'm not here to write a sale. I'm here to ask how I can help you. And I'm also going to commit myself that I'm in this for the long run. And that does not, <laughs> not fit to the business model of many small companies. They don't have the luxury, but you have to make it fit. Don't stop your direct action advertising. Add this, this communication, this nurturing, this indirect advertising, such as networking, to the mix to get the type of results that you want. Now, one of the things that uh, there was a survey done about by some of the major master networkers, uh, this guy Eisner, who was the president of BNI and a few others, and they asked them what were some of the traits of master networkers. The number one trait was listening, listening skills. Number two was having a positive attitude. Hold your back up, head up, smile, be positive. The last one was follow up. You really have to follow up. Um, now follow up, you know, that's, a, that's a course in itself, but I'm just gonna quickly tell you some of the things about following up. Understand that everybody is not the same. And that's where networking has gone wrong with so many people. When they thought they finally make that connection, they don't realize that there are people falling into different types of personality groups. There's a fast paced people and there's the slow paced people. Some people just gotta have things right away. Some are more measured and methodical. There are the people oriented people and then there's the task oriented people. Some people like to slap you on the back and shake hands, go out and play golf. And then the other like they want no part of that. Don't start the conversation talking about your baby and weather. They want to get straight to the point. And as you start networking more often, you will see and you can pick up little signals to see which type of people you're dealing with. Then there's a high tech versus low tech. I did a whole section on why people calling me on the telephone <laughs> when that's in many cases, that's a bygone era, depending on the person you're talking to. Also, another tip about networking is that you can't treat all of your, you go out to a networking event and you get yourself a pocket full of business cards. You can't treat them all the same. Some people say, look, well, I got went to this event. I got 30, 30 leads. Let me put them in alphabetical order here so I can have some type of order so I can work my way through this list. Now the phone start ringing, the baby crying, the car broke down, you need to get gas. You get about from A to about C and you've run out of time. So what you wanna do when you get these leads and you start doing this follow-up, you have to categorize people. So that the perfect people that need the help the most, get it first. Probability, what's the probability that this person is gonna become a customer or a client? What is the payoff? If this is a $10,000 contract versus a business card order that's gonna cost you you're going to net $75. What's the urgency? How soon do they need it? If you go into a networking event, let's say if I'm a web developer and the person tells me his website crashed last night, I don't need to put him into a list of alphabetical order. I need to call him from the parking lot. <laughs> I said, look, man, let's go ahead and take care of this right now. We don't have to wait for follow-up. So you have to, as a networker, understand that all leads, all connections, are not created equal. And what is the effort? Some jobs you can just knock out right away. 
So that's another way you can uh, categorize and be more effective in your networking. Then now we've moved into an era of virtual networking. Man, I'm telling you, some things we hadn't planned on. This pandemic was, was on nobody's radar. We didn't plan for this. But something like networking, which was so vital to us, took a hit. We had to recalibrate. We had to pivot. I'm going to give you just the three L's as you go forward in this virtual networking. Okay? Light, lens, and location. As you get on these Zoom calls, as you get on these different types of platforms, first impressions still count. Now, we've been given about a year grace period where most people say, okay, we understand you're still new to this platform. Okay, so you spend the first 15 minutes trying to figure out how to get the Zoom working or get the internet. Those days are just about done. So now people are starting to evaluate you, not just on your information and content, on your impression on these digital platforms. So make sure you got your right lighting. Make sure your camera, just do this, ladies and gentlemen, before you start your next meeting, if you're doing it by your phone or any device, take yourself a good old napkin or a tissue and wipe the lens on your camera. You've been wanting, many people have bought new phones because they didn't realize that the reason their camera was fuzzy, it had grease and grime on it. <laughs> that old camera you got right now, that, that iPhone 7 or 6, can get new life by simply just wiping the lens. And if you're doing like a, a, a selfie, wipe the front and the back. These are just simple, basic things that's going to help you if you get out here and start presenting yourself in this digital world. So also, I'm going to, before I close, we're going to talk about LinkedIn networking. If you're talking about uh, networking digitally, LinkedIn is a great tool. I've made a lot of uh, contacts, and that was my really my first love when it came to social media. But continuing to think reciprocally or reciprocity, go into LinkedIn and start trying to reconnect with some of the people that you have didn't connect with in the past. You may have connected with them. You lost connection. Just go in and type in. I'm just checking on you to make sure things are OK. We haven't talked in a while. You'll be amazed how that can bring customers to you today. You've built this goodwill. You've made this connection. Now you just need to capitalize on it. Before you go out and spend another dollar on Facebook or radio, go back through your old connection and just reach out. That doesn't cost you a penny. It's going to cost you a little time. Uh, reach out to industry influencers. There are people in your industry that have clout, that influence, that can change the game for you. Once again, take that spirit of reciprocity. Don't go to them with your hand out like a beggar. You go to them and say, look, I can give you even more influence. Let me help you. I've watched your video. I'd like to share it with my audience if that's OK with you. That creates goodwill and it starts the conversation with these influencers can have a dramatic impact on your trajectory. Join these groups. There's a lot of good groups on LinkedIn and some of these other platforms good way to network. And don't be afraid to ask for help within your network. Some of the tools you need for networking, of course, good business cards. <laughs> you got to get your elevator pitch. If you're doing it virtually, you want a good Zoom, uh, good light, get some light, get you a good camera. You probably want to get about a 1080. I mean, 720 is OK. Many people are now going to 4G. I'm not sure that's necessarily, because sometimes your computer won't even handle all that volume, all of that, uh, that requirement. But you do want a good quality camera. You want to make sure. In some cases, you want to use a green screen. If you have a background that's not uh, su uh, suitable, then those are some of the things that you might invest in networking. What are the costs of investment? The main one is time. And I don't want to belittle or minimize your time because time is better than money as far as I'm concerned. So when you're doing your cost analysis, count the time, the hours that it takes you to implement, the cost of going to the meetings, the cost of preparation, the cost of follow-up. Those are tangible costs, even though you may not take money out of your pocket. That's money out of your schedule. So it does have a cost. Uh, some places charge for meetings. If you're joining a group like BNI, Business Networking International, I think you charge like 600 bucks a year. But when you think about 600 bucks in terms of a year's worth of advertising, that's not too bad. Uh, sometimes there's mission fees. Uh, sometimes uh, you have to pay uh, dues. 
Uh, you may have to get yourself some new business cards, uh, some specialty items to hand out, like cups and mugs and cards and things like that, and your tools for Zoom. So there are some costs, but even with those costs, you're still going to be ahead if you, you know, you're still less than paying for traditional advertising, where you have more control because you are the star. It's you. It's your show. Um, there are some organizations out here that I would suggest you take a look at if you're really serious about networking. And I'm not getting paid by these organizations. I'm just saying this because I've been in many of them and they actually work. Uh, BNI, uh, that's a big group. Uh, LinkedIn, of course, they have their network. Uh, the Chamber of Commerce is where you are. Eventbrite, uh, the industry association, whether the MBA Association, the laws, the National Bar Association, uh, the Technical Engineers Association, these mastermind groups, great places to network. Meetup. Now, Meetup is a, um, I, I like Meetup because you can go to meetup.com right now and just put in your zip code and it'll tell you what networking groups are taking place right now as we speak. So you could be networking as soon as an hour from now by just going to Meetup, putting in your zip code and it take it a little further, put in the industry or the, the type of interest that you have, and it will point you into the right direction. You could be zooming into a networking event by, by one o'clock this afternoon, if not sooner. And if all else fails, you can always start your own networking group. About a few years ago, I had a group called First Friday that was a spinoff from this uh, this TV show when we were over at Radio One, and it became very popular. We would get into the hundreds of people in some occasions because we were aligning the, the, the group with our mission, and so you may have a, a network already established, and so don't be afraid to stick your toe in the water and start your own networking group if you can't find one that really suits your needs. So, folks, that's going to wrap it up for today. I want to.